In this episode, we take a look at the Rode PSA OnePlus microphone studio arm. Let me tell you my experience with microphone studio arms. It started when I bought the Heil microphones studio arm. It's about a $79 microphone arm. And it's pretty simple. And the way it kind of came about is I had to look around on Amazon to see what I could find. And I don't believe the original Rode PSA 1 was out or available yet. So the Heil arm, it was okay, but not amazing. Even when it was new, the knob for locking the microphone, the attachment bit, this part right here, was difficult to use and didn't always stick in place. But with some effort and <laughs> with fear of potentially stripping the screw or the nut, it worked for me for several years mostly, but not without frustration. Then in 2020, I decided to buy a real professional grade arm. Didn't care how much it cost. Well, I did care, but even if it was under $500, that was good enough. So I found a company called Yellow Tech from Germany and their Mika line. Now I use this today, every single day with my Rode NT1. And their marketing, Mika that is, Yellow Tech, says, and I quote, the world's most beautiful mounting system. And I have to say, it does look nice. It does have an internal cable, but the tension knobs are simply not capable of holding that microphone up once you put a heavier broadcast style dynamic microphone on there. Also, once you extend the stand out far enough, it simply can't hold the weight of some of those dynamic microphones. It's fine if you keep the arm at a 90 degree angle, but it, anytime you go beyond that to reach farther, for example, the arm just sinks. So anything like a Shure SM7B or an Electrovoice RE20, it really just can't hold them. In addition to that, I can't put a Shure SM7B on this because I need a little bit more clearance between the threads for the microphone clip and the actual microphone itself. And that's partly an SM7B issue because of its funky little XLR output right there by the threads. So you do need an adapter to make that work. It costs 374 euros plus another 74 euros for the desk grommet, the mounting hardware to kind of drill a hole in the desk and mount it there. So when people ask, I usually hesitate to recommend the Mika just because it's so expensive and it has a good number of flaws, even though it looks great. My favorite is the OC White Pro Boom Ultima Gen 2 Low Profile Arm. I love this, and it is the one I use every week for my live streams and sometimes for my main channel. It sits low to the desk so that the microphone is just barely visible at the bottom of the frame. It also hides the microphone cable inside the arms, and the mounting and adjustment hardware is excellent and quiet. It never strains under the weight of heavier microphones and has a tension adjustment to adapt to different weights. I can adjust the outer arm's height and it just works. However, it is not cheap at around $400 US. So that brings us to the PSA One Plus. The PSA One Plus is reasonably priced at $129 USD for an arm, which works. <laughs> it is stable and able to hold heavier microphones up to 1.2 kilograms or 2.6 pounds. The Electrovoice RE20, for example, is not a problem at all for this arm. The Shure SM7B is a problem for nearly every microphone with <laughs> arm with its odd XLR output right next to the threaded attachment nut, so you will need an adapter for something like that. But this is true of pretty much all mic arms. In terms of the microphone mounting mechanism, it's pretty good. There are two knobs to position the angle of the threads and its rotation angle and tension. I haven't used the original PSA-1, but I suspect this is an upgrade from the original. It seems to tighten down nicely, certainly better than my original Heil arm did. The threads are 3 8 inch with an adapter for 5 8 inch. If you change microphones a lot and have microphone clips and shock mounts with 5 8 inch threads, the adapter does have a knurled edge at the top that allows you to loosen it with your fingers, that is, if it isn't too tightly connected. And if it is, it has these notches so that you can loosen it with a driver or key like this. It also has a finger tightening nut, which allows you to stabilize the microphone in place, and that works well. And there is an additional knurled surface at the top to help you position your mic's rotation. Overall, the mic mounting hardware works well and seems quite solid. 
The stand does a pretty nice job of isolating the microphone from the desk and from the movement of the arm itself with rubber damped joints. Here's some samples. First we'll move the mic arm. Next up, I'll bump the table. And now I'll type on my keyboard. This is an Apple keyboard. Here's the same thing, this time with a microphone desk stand. So one that sits right on the desk. Here are some bumps. And here's typing on an Apple keyboard. Now, a little awkward because I had to put the keyboard behind the stand. Let's put it in front now. As for mounting, you have two options and both are included, which is really nice. There's a clamp, which you simply clamp to the edge of your desk wherever it makes sense for your setup. There's also an included mount for attaching a hole in your desk. And this is nicely sized so that if you already have a standard grommet, it fits right over it. Of course, you can also drill a hole yourself and it does not have to be the full diameter of the mount, just the size of the threaded part, which fits through the desk. I'd recommend you use the clamp first to find a good position, even if you are going to eventually use the desk hole mounting hardware, so you can feel confident about where you drill that hole. Cable management is handled with some clips on the neoprene feeling cover. It doesn't entirely hide the cable, but it does keep it tidy, and it works whether you're using an XLR cable or a USB cable. The microphone retains its aim regardless of how you position the arm, which is pretty nice. You don't have to risk additional movement when repositioning the mic. This prevents noise from creaking mic clips and things like that. The stand is what I would describe as medium to large sized with a 34 inch vertical reach and a 37 inch horizontal reach. That's 86 centimeters and 94 centimeters respectively. And of course the price is $129 USD. That makes this the best value for cost arm that I've used. Nice job, Road. Now there is one major con and let's talk about that elephant in the room. The branding is far too prominent for my taste. I love you, Road, but I don't want to advertise quite to this extent for you. I'd be willing to pay a bit more for no branding or just maybe cover it with gaffer's tape. Overall, I recommend this arm if you need to keep the price under $150 and you want a solid, high-quality microphone arm. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.